Welcome to Ask the Professor, presented by Fountain Pen Geeks. My name is Eric Schneider, and with us today is Professor Tarkine Dangleberry. Tarquin! Tarquin! Okay, okay. Professor Dangleberry, good day to you, sir. Ah, there you are. Good day to you, sir. So nice to see you again, and yes. Lord Windermere. And Lord Windermere, he's right here by my side. Uh, forgive me for asking, but I'm going to ask anyway. Lord Windermere wears a top hat, apparently. Uh, this is correct, yes. So always I... dressed for something, you know, a gala event? Well, he's a lord, you see. Oh, so that's it, that's his uniform. It, yes, it's it's part of he. He came with the hat. And he never took it off. Never took it I'm off. I'm not sure whether he can reach it, but yeah, he can sort of reach it. And he just that's just that's the way. This is the Lord Windermere, Windy, as I like to call him. That I know. That's just the way he looks. Yes. Windy, Windy. What? Uh, windy. Since we're on, uh, you know, nicknames. What do people call you as a nickname? Tark. Professor. Prof. Professor. That's yes. your nickname. It's yeah, a... that's what my friends call me. <laughs> what do people say behind your back? Uh, sir. Sir, <laughs> sir yeah. we're going to get right to our first question. Yeah. Yeah, first question today comes from Lee in Mississippi. Yeah. <clears throat> Two questions, but they're all in one, so I'll read them both. Why use gold to make nibs at all? Doesn't it only make pens more expensive? Now, a, a few, I don't know, a few weeks ago, we, we had a, yeah. a gold versus steel question. Yes. And yeah. we, I think we admitted that gold was more expensive. So exactly. now that we're using steel to make things more economical, why, why use gold at all? That's a very good question. I think one of the, the possible answers is that some people, quite simply, like it. Some it, people it like it. Exactly. They see a pen which may have some gold trimmings, and they may think, well, a steel nib would just look out of place. What do you do? You make a gold nib. It's, it carries a certain prestige. Why do some people buy a very expensive car or, 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 you know, something like that, or very expensive clothes? Well, because it carries a certain prestige. Um, we've already discussed the, the actual properties, maybe some more flex, maybe not some more flex in, in, in gold versus steel. I don't think we have to reiterate all of that again. But I, I would say that, that one of the main reasons is prestige. And one thing in the performance is that I would say in general, a gold nib could be expected to give a bit more springiness. But as we've covered before, that is not necessarily always the case. True, and I agree with everything yes. you said. Uh, do you do you have a favorite nib of all the nibs? I mean, I know I'm just talking steel yes. and gold and and titanium and rhodium plated yes. gold. Do you have something aesthetically speaking that that appeals to you? Ah, I see. Yes. Um, this is just a question from me, by the way. That didn't actually come in. Oh, the mail. oh I see. <laughs> I, I missed that. Yes, thank you. Uh, yes. No. No. I I have to say I am somewhat partial. To gold nibs. Well, with the gold color. Because I like gold nibs gold that are color. rhodium plated. Yes. I don't. You don't? All right. No. Just, just... No, I, don't, I, I mean, it's, it, it, it works. But for me, it looks too much like steel, you see. True. Aesthetically yes. speaking, it, it. I mean, I don't think you could tell from across the room or even probably no. up close unless you saw no. what it was marked with. But uh, yes, exactly. I like the silver color. And since they don't make yes. silver nibs. Uh, yeah, so yeah, moving right. right along, Professor. Yes. Uh, our next question yep. comes from Johnny in Colorado. Johnny, yes. Are piston fillers better than cartridge converter fillers? Yes, well, that's kind of like asking, what is better, a Formula One car or a sedan? I mean, I'm not saying one is better than the other. They're just two different objects. The main advantage of a piston filler is, of course, that it will, generally speaking, draw up more ink. So the ink capacity of the pen will be larger. <clears throat> now, on the other hand, I would say that a cartridge converter filler is easier to use to the extent that you can pick up some standard international cartridges from pretty much every shop all over the world. Whereas buying bottled ink these days may be a little bit more difficult. So I would say the main advantage is the ink capacity and some people think that a, piston, a filler sort of adds to the whole feeling of the pen. They think it is more pleasant to use. I personally do not really consider that to be the case, but I do applaud the fact that uh, a piston filler will hold more ink. And that's good when one does a lot of writing, obviously. I'm sorry, Professor, are you saying piston filler or piston filler? Uh, I was saying piston filler. <laughs> All right. Piston filler. Piston that's filler. That's the way I was saying. <laughs> Yes. Do you have a preference? I mean, uh, Johnny Johnny didn't ask that, but I'm asking it. 
Well, I didn't really mind that much. Um, I mean, cartridge converter fillers are just very easy to use, so they have their place. The beauty, I think, of a piston fill mechanism, and that's the reason I enjoy it so much, is that the pen becomes a self-contained unit. There are no things you have to uh, take out. There are no things, as with cartridges, that you have to throw away, which is, of course, very detrimental to the environment, etc., etc. Um, so I would say that my personal preference, if I have to choose, is a piston filler. Yes. Very good, sir. Yes, I'm on the same page with you. Yes. Closing right along, here we yes. have... Here we have a letter from Miyako in Japan. Oh. And a uh, very good question, too. How do I decide which nib width I need for my handwriting? Ah, yes. Well, of course, in general, one could say that the finer the handwriting, the finer the nib one needs. Now, By the fine, is, you mean we... small. Yes, exactly, exactly. Smaller handwriting will require a finer nib. And the, the, the question is, Lord Willemere seems to slide down. Wait a minute, let me read just Lord Willemere. There we go. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Sometimes I was a funny little fellow. Um, so how do we decide what makes up small handwriting? What is small and what is large? Well, a very simple test I once read about in a very nice book called Fountain Pens um, suggests the following. Go to a store, try out any given nib, I suppose would Makes sense to start with medium, because it's medium. And then you write the letter E, lowercase e. And if the little bowl of the E is filled with ink, then the nib is too broad. For and your that handwriting. Is, for your handwriting. Now, that is such an astonishingly simple test that I can recommend anyone to try that out. I mean, how much simpler can it be? Right, so um, you go somewhere where you can get your hands on a medium nib... Yes. A pen yes. with a medium nib that actually has ink in it, and you write a yes. lowercase e in the size that you would normally write it. Exactly. And if the 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 loop in the e fills with ink, don't yes. adjust the size of your writing. Get a smaller no. width uh, nib width. Yes, exactly. That's very exactly. good, professor. That's excellent. Yeah, isn't it? The 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 problem could be for some people that they don't have a store handy that has actual yeah. pens for testing. Yeah. In that case, I would say. Start with medium, quite simply because it's neither broad nor fine. Then you try that out. If it's if you can do this test at home, I, it's a pity that you have to get a pen somehow. But a lot of sellers offer you the service that you can return a nib. So if you don't like the medium nib that much, you can always send it back and say, "My dear fellow, I need a finer nib," and they will usually give it to you. And if you need a broader nib, you can say. Hello, old chap. I need a broader nib. And that's what you'll get, you see. Yes, there are sellers who will replace the nib. Um, yeah. And this is probably a good time to bring up the fact that not all medium nibs are the same. Uh, not all yeah. fine nibs yeah. are the same. Yeah. Uh, some correct. fine nibs are actually finer than other fine nibs. Some yes. extra fine nibs are more like fine nibs on other pens. Uh, yeah. And you can actually find that information out if you do a little research online. Yeah. If if you are, for instance, interested in a Lamy, you yes. can find out whether or not their fine is like other fines that you may be familiar with. Yes. Exactly. Lamy is a very Stay good example friendly. now. Uh, because Sorry. like a Lamy Safari, for instance, you can interchange yes. the nibs quite easily, even Very while the, easy. even while the pen is inked up. You exactly. just pull the, pull, exactly. the, pull the nib and put the other one in. Exactly. exactly. And you say to and start with a medium, but I suppose that's for somebody who doesn't already know that they have small writing or very large writing. Yes, yes. <clears throat> of course. But then again, I can imagine that if you have been, uh, God forbid, but you've been using ballpoint pens all your life, you have no idea about, you know, nib width to get. Uh, this would be a good a good starting point. But of course, if you if a lot of people have told you, oh, I need a microscope to read that, then it may yeah. well be a good idea start to with take a fine, a fine nib. <laughs> or if they say, oh, is this with really a paintbrush? Then you may need a broad or maybe even a double broad nib. Yes. Right. So if you have no no indication whatsoever, then start with a medium. And if yes, you I do have an indication, go in that direction. But you really have yes. to try it. But I really like yeah, that absolutely. e-test. Thank you for sharing that, Professor. Yes, you're very well. Actually, I, I should point out once again, this is not something I have thought up. This oh, yeah. is something Peter Twidel mentioned in his book. I'm just sharing the Oh, one. okay. You gave the name. All right. Uh, which book yes. was it? Uh, the, the book is called Fountain Pens. Fountain Pens by... Peter Twidle. That is T-W-Y-D-L-E. Twidle. Is, is, it, is that the only excellent thing in the book, or are there other gems? 
Uh, or, l- let me let me answer that question in two ways. Um, no and no. There are many, many excellent things in that book. I, in, in fact, I think it is safe to say that of all the fundamental books I own, uh, which is quite a lot, uh, this is my favorite. And the reason, it has a couple of reasons. It's a nice book. It looks pretty, which is good. I mean, glossy paper, people enjoy that. Um, it gives a lot of information. And it is written by a person who knows what he's talking about because his father was one of the uh, most well-known fountain pen repairmen of his age in the UK. Excellent. Excellent. Yes. Thank you for sharing, Professor, but I still have one last question for you. Yes, of course. If you have the time. I, I Well, yes, I, I think I can make some time. This question comes from Charlie in Perth, Australia. Charlie in Perth. <clears throat> Interesting. Weren't you the headmaster at Hogwarts? For a, a, a short while. Yes, I, I have done so, um, but unfortunately, I, I let me put it this way. At some point, I took a magic wand and dipped it in a bottle of ink to write with it. Apparently, that was not the intention. That was a no-no. And I just made the whole school disappear. The only thing that was left was me sitting on a chair, and the whole thing was just gone. And then that lady, who used to drop by every once in a while, who, who wrote books on, on the whole setting there... Uh, she stopped dropping by because there was nothing left, and that was the end of the series, I suppose. Well, I mean, I'm not. I mean, it's not. I mean, I wasn't actually intentionally trying to do anything wrong. I was just trying to write something down, and that's that was the end of it. Yes. So the answer is yes. The answer is yes. Yes. But yes. for a short time. But for a short time. Very yes. good, sir. I think Thank was, you. I think I've I've spent about four hours. Four hours. On that job. Yes. Very and good. Was, well, that's four hours more than I've been. At any yeah, rate. That's right. Thank you once again, Professor, for spending your time with us and answering our pressing questions. And I yes, hope that we'll do this again. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. As, as always, give my regards to uh, Windy. Lord Windy. Yes, Lord Windy may have oh, to you.